What up, YouTube? Topaz is back for another EP review, and this one is to that party next door, Colors 2. And I'm giving this one a low in yellow light because, quite frankly, it's not that good. But the perfect way to define it would be like the term that a lot of these reviews and such out here are using these days, and it's called crooner. And you know, most people tend to never tell you exactly what that means, but it's a term that derives from jazz musicians. Well, in this context, they're pretty much using it as anybody singing a super sensitive type song while they keeping a low tone of voice and all that stuff, dude. And you know, with that being what that is, that's a perfect description of all of these songs on this EP. And honestly, that's really the problem with all of these songs because it's a super dry project. And it's really most of Party Next Door's music is super dry like this anyway. Even the songs that Drake gets up off of him or whatever, man, they all tend to be those super dry, drawn out, female friendly songs that I'm not gonna knock because they always tend to find their own niche and they find and their own success and all that. It's just I'm not very big on it. But let's go ahead and break this down from the beginning, man. Starting with Peace of Mind, in which this song is pretty much all about just being with a woman and you losing all sense of time and not really caring about anything that's going on. But yet, Pony Next Door did say something specifically, like he specifically pointed out saying that I still have to go out here and get this money though. As much as he desires to just be with this woman and not do anything else and as much as this chick is perfect for him in his eyes as he's defining the things that he really likes about her, he still realizes what's most important for him as an individual is to go out there and continue pushing towards his success and that's something that all guys really just need to recognize because you can easily fall into that whole I'm just gonna lay up with this woman and do nothing else. At the end of the day man you still got to be you and to keep it 100 with you man a lot of these women will respect you more if you going out there doing the things that you need to do anyway. Like, no woman really likes their dude to be sitting up under them at all times. They'll try to claim like they don't, but there comes a point where they just kind of let that go. The next song is Freaking You, and this song is obviously inspired by Jodeci right here, as he did an interpolation within here for that Come and Talk to Me, as they're also taking the title of that Freaking You or whatever. And then I also hear a lot of Young Thug in this as well, man. Like, you can tell he's somewhat inspired by Young Thug in order to try to create something for that current fan base and all of that stuff, dude. As the core concept is pretty much trying to find the freak inside of a particular woman and all that, and that's just some real talk right there because there's a freak in every single woman. It's all in how you bring it out of them. And a lot of cases, dudes, you just don't know how to do that. The next song is Low Battery, in which this is one of those pseudo dance hall type songs that everybody out here is making, but in this one is his own twist on this is like the conclusion of a relationship here where he's trying to send messages to this woman while his phone is about to die But yet he's trying to seek out closure with these messages where he honestly should just call her but whatever But ultimately he's asking did she cheat? Did she lie? All of this type of stuff within this track And the last song is Rendezvous where this song is him ultimately talking to his jump off who wants more from him than just being a jump off and he's like this is what's working for us. This is honestly what I want from you or whatever, dude. And I don't understand what it is you want from me. I do feel as though there was potential in these particular songs based off of those concepts and such. But yet that production was just way too dry. And then the overall songs just really wasn't there. Like lyricism, even though he's singing... Honestly, you can have some smooth lyricism in there. One thing that always annoys me and such, man, is that people believe that you can't be lyrical if you're a singer and all of that stuff, dude. But if you go back to some of them old school songs, which they went out and bought up people to write the lyrics and stuff for them, those writers were really good at showing some really key lyricism. It's just they did it so good and it was so simple that people didn't really think it was great lyricism. Honestly, there wasn't a single song on here that I feel as though was worth a purchase or anything, man but I still feel as though it's worth a listen at least one good time and then just discard it and never go back from there. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there and you can go to downloadpads.com that's down there to read today's article.